So winter is here and I don't know about you, but my lips are definitely in need of some serious TLC. I feel like even just an hour of being outside in winter weather can really irritate and chop your lips. So I thought now would be a good time of year to do a video comparing five different brands lip balms and deciding which brand makes the best lip balm. My lips are definitely prone to dryness. I already have dry skin. So I am a really good tell if a lip balm is truly going to heal the lips. And remember that if you do enjoy today's video, definitely make sure to give this video a thumbs up. So I'm going to be reviewing five different lip balms based on price, the ingredients, the texture, because I think texture with lip balms is very important, as well as the actual performance. How did it end up healing my lips? I've been testing out these lip balms for over a month now, so I really have a good feel for them. And I also will be including demos so you can see how they apply to my lips. This video is actually inspired by some of Emily Mariko's videos here on YouTube. She's been doing like what brand makes the best sweatpants, what brand makes the best t-shirts, and I really love her video so definitely make sure to check her out. So many of you might just call lip balm chopstick, which is obviously a brand. So number one, I will be reviewing just basic chopstick. When you're at the drugstore, you need to pick something up really quick. You want it to be affordable. This is what a lot of people go for. So speaking about the price, this is an extremely affordable product. This is the candy cane version of chopstick, but you can get three of these and a pack for around $5. As for price, this is definitely super affordable. So talking about the ingredients, when looking at ingredients in lip balms, it's important for me to distinguish what they're actually doing for the skin. I treat lip balms the same way I treat all of my skincare reviews. What are these ingredients doing for on my skin and what am I actually paying for? I'm going to be mainly focusing on the first three ingredients within all of these lip balms because those are the ingredients in the highest concentration. The first ingredient in here is petrolatum or petroleum, which is essentially a skin protectant. Petroleum is definitely a more controversial ingredient because it's not really a sustainable ingredient. It's super cheap, but Again, it's not sustainable for the earth, so that is something to keep in mind. And the next two ingredients are paraffins and mineral oil, which are essentially, you know, cousins of petroleum. I'm pretty sure like paraffins are found in petrolatum and mineral oil is also found in paraffins. Long story short, they all do the same thing. What these ingredients do is form a protective barrier on the skin, which can be super, super helpful in winter weather. Like I was saying before, you know, I feel like I can go outside and immediately my lips are dry. You really need something protecting that skin on your lips. The lip skin loses moisture easily, and it's good to have that protective layer to help keep in moisture. Petroleum-based product is going to do that very well. I have absolutely heard a lot of people say you should stay away from petroleum in your lip balms because it's not really doing anything. I would say I would be more focused on the sustainability problem with petroleum rather than its effectiveness because petroleum is a very effective ingredient at protecting the skin. Having ingredients that both heal the lips and protect the lips are really where you want to be when you're looking for a lip balm. They kind of need each other, in my opinion, to be the complete package. This doesn't really have any healing ingredients whatsoever, so it's not going to heal your lips if you have dry lips. It's only going to protect the lips and keep it from getting worse. It's protecting the lips so that your lips can repair themselves, basically. So I will say that if you're, you know, going on a skiing trip, Trip or you're going to be doing a lot of outdoor activities in the winter. This is not a bad product to pick up. It's very affordable and you can very easily just protect your lips using this. Next, let's talk about a product that I've been super excited to try for a while and you guys were really interested in this one. It is Lanolips. And I specifically got the banana balm version because I have a weird thing with banana in my lip balms. I just love that flavor. And this also has like very, very tiny glitter particles, but it's not really something I notice on the lips. It retails for $15.95 and you get 0.44 ounces in here, which makes it about $36 for an ounce, which is pretty expensive. Talking about the ingredients, the number one ingredient in here is lanolin. And lanolin is essentially an oil wax that protects sheep's wool. So again, it works more as a protectant 
for the wool and when used on the skin and lips it really helps protect the skin lanolin is actually a very common ingredient in nipple cream that kind of makes sense because it is working as a protectant it kind of serves the same function on your lips as it would on the nipples so lanolin is a great protective ingredient now the second ingredient in lanolips is shea butter which i love shea butter for the lips i find it really really helps hydrate and moisturize my lips all over the body all over the skin and the lips shea butter tends to be a very well tolerated ingredient it really helps to moisturize the skin and the third ingredient is cacao seed butter it's really going to help repair the moisture barrier and get your skin back into a good place ingredients wise i really do like these ingredients because it pairs moisturizing ingredients you know those seed butters with the lanolin which will protect the lips now let's talk about the texture i actually really enjoy this texture because it's about a medium weight so i do find that it will stick to the lips i don't like a very watery or thin lip balm because i feel like it might get outside of my lip lines and i don't necessarily like that feeling but it will give your lips just that little bit of shine that i think is really flattering i also very much enjoy the packaging I like that you don't need to use your finger you can go in straight from the tube which during this time of year especially when everyone is sick i really don't like to put my fingers into my lip balm you don't need a spatula or a finger to pick up the product and apply it to the lips which i think is a great convenience and lastly talking about the performance of the lip product because i have found that some lip balms have great ingredients but they don't necessarily translate and work really well for the lips i find that super common with other skincare products as well the ingredient list is like amazing and then in practice my skin just doesn't really jive with it for the lana lips i actually find it very nourishing and hydrating I definitely find that once the product has faded on the lips that my skin looks a little bit plumper. This definitely plumps up the lips and any lines that you have because your lips are chapped, which I really appreciate. I like that my lips feel a little bit more plush. They definitely heal quicker when I'm using this consistently. I like the flavor as well. It kind of gives you incentive to keep using it. Overall, I just in general really like it and it works well for my lips. Moving on to lip balm number three, we have the Nukes Rev de Miel. This is actually a French brand and you cannot watch a video about French pharmacy brands without someone mentioning Nukes definitely are known for having great products and this is the first one that I have tried from them. I was really interested and you guys were too in seeing what I thought about this one. It retails for $24 and you get half an ounce in here. It ends up being um, just over $47 per ounce. This is definitely a more expensive lip product. Let's talk about the ingredients on this one. So the first ingredient in here is beeswax. Beeswax isn't a super nourishing ingredient. It works as a protectant for the skin. It will form that protective barrier that is really important this time of year in the winter. Second ingredient in here is shea butter again, which again, I've already mentioned is a phenomenal ingredient and one that I love in all of my skincare. I really, really appreciate the addition of the shea butter. And then the third is vegetable oil. So vegetable oil works as a nourishing ingredient similar to something like vitamin E. They also have a couple of different other oils. There's also sweet almond oil and sunflower seed oil in this. This is a honey lip balm. That's the way it's marketed. So there is actual honey in here as well. But the main three ingredients are again, beeswax, shea butter, and vegetable oil. Thinking about the actual texture of the product, looking at all of the lip balms we're talking about today, I feel like this texture is the most unique. It has an extremely thick texture but once you apply it to the finger and onto the skin it doesn't feel thick it really doesn't feel like you have much on your lips at all which is nice it's definitely a change of pace you know using a lot of lip balms you definitely feel them on the lips which is a good thing sometimes and sometimes maybe you don't something else that's really interesting about this one is that it's a very matte finish there isn't a lot of shine which i actually like sometimes sometimes i don't want a very very glossy balm on my lips i personally have actually loved the texture of this product to layer under lipstick 
that's what I did today and I just love the combination because this won't mess with the finish of the lipstick. So as a whole, I just think that the texture is really nice and unique. And lastly, we have the performance. How does this actually work for my lips? I have to say I'm actually super impressed with the way that this has healed my lips. And I'll tell you a quick story of how I know that this is actually an incredible product to heal the lips. I started applying this before bed at first just to see how I felt it was actually healing my lips. I think that's really a good tell to wear a lip balm overnight because you're not talking, you're not eating. And I woke up the next morning and it's not that my lips were super, super soft. Like they weren't baby soft. They weren't super plush. They were just completely healed. I had like some cracking in the corners of my mouth. Overall, just a lot of tightness and my lips were just completely healed. And what I was even more impressed with, I wasn't necessarily impressed with, oh, the lip balm did what it was supposed to do. It's that over the course of the day, I did not need to apply lip balm again. I feel like this is really good at protecting the lips and healing them long term, which I think is more important this time of year. And on top of that, when you think about an expensive product like this, you actually end up needing less product because it's actually doing its job. You aren't reapplying all the time or feeling the need to. When it works, it works and you won't need to use as much. As a whole, this is definitely a top contender. Next, let's talk about a lip balm that was kind of like a cult classic for a while and then everyone was using it and everyone was really loving it. It is the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask. I personally have been a fan of this one for a very long time. It retails for $20 and you get 0.7 ounces in here. I've had this one for quite a while, probably longer than I should. Even though this is more expensive, you really don't need much. So talking about the ingredients, this is when I actually really need my notes. The first ingredient is disosterol malate, and that's an emollient. So it's typically used in lipsticks. So to give the lipsticks a nice buttery and smooth formula, that's typically an emollient that is used. I think it's interesting off the bat, we've been talking more about protective ingredients being the first ingredient, and this is the first formula that we've just had an emollient. Second is hydrogenated polyisobutene, and this is a very protective ingredient. It works the same as typically like a mineral oil would. And the third ingredient is phytosterol, isosterol, settle, denialate. Basically what all that means is that this has a lot of plant-derived fatty alcohols, so not the alcohol that you would worry about drying out your skin. It's the alcohol that actually helps to dehydrate the skin. It's more of like a skin conditioning agent, and it actually has a very high capacity for holding water. Apparently this ingredient actually holds more water than something like lanolin. The Laneige has a lot of skin conditioning and skin softening ingredients, which definitely differs from the other lip balms that we were talking about today. And I'll explain when we talk about the performance of the product, why I think that that is important. So as for the texture, this has a very thick texture. Um, there's quite a few flavors. I have the berry flavor and I would kind of describe the texture as being something like caramel. It's glossy, smooth. I don't think it's necessarily sticky, but it definitely leaves kind of like a more milky look to the lips. I think for daytime, it looks a little bit too apparent, milky thick on the lips to be something that I would wear. You no know, sheared out, just using a little bit, you can definitely get away with it. Talking about the performance of the product and also using the context of what a sleeping mask is, a sleeping mask is really supposed to seal everything into the skin. This product reminds me of something like an essence. So we talked before about a lot of the skin softening agents in this product, Essences do often have skin conditioning and softening ingredients to really make your skin feel supple. I feel like that's a great distinction because the one reason I've loved this one for a long time is that I wake up the next morning and my lips just feel soft. And that's definitely something that a lot of us want during the winter. We want for our lips to feel almost like exfoliated. 
I think that this is a really great option if you do have more like crackly skin and you want to kind of soften the surface of your lips. I have found that this has definitely healed and moisturized my lips in the past, but I will say that every morning when I wake up, I still notice this on my lips. And I think it's important to note that that's not necessarily the best thing. I used to think that I wanted all of my skincare to still be very wet and oily on my skin because that meant that my skin was protected throughout the night. I don't necessarily disagree with that, but I also think there's something to be said about a lip balm that really sinks into the lips rather than just sitting on top of the skin and not really penetrating. I still think that this is a really great option if you are looking for a more lip softening effect. And finally, let's talk about the Bite Beauty Nighttime Lip Therapy. It retails for $22 and you get 0.5 ounces in here. It ends up being around $44, very similar price point to the Lanolips. Talking about the ingredients, the number one ingredient is castor seed oil. It is a really amazing ingredient if you want to nourish the lips because it is a humectant. It's pooling water from the air into the skin. So keep in mind that that is awesome for a lot of you, but if you live in an extremely dry climate, it won't be as effective unless there is water in the air. So I definitely love using humidifiers this time of year, but you know, if you're in the office or out in the open with a lot of dry air, this ingredient won't be as effective. Second is trisosterol polyglycerol, which is a skin conditioner, um, very similar to the last ingredients we were talking about in the Laneige. It's a skin conditioner as well as a more waterproofing agent, so it will help to protect the lips. And the last ingredient is lanolin. As we mentioned before, this is another protective ingredient. There is also some agave in here, which gives it a very pleasant, um, mild, sweet scent. I know that Bite Beauty has been doing some reformulation. I'm not positive if this is different than the original lip mask in the tube, but that one actually didn't necessarily work for me and I have found that this one is more nourishing. As for the texture, this texture to me reminds me of a thinner version of the Laneige. It, it melts much more easily on the lips and it gives you a very shiny look to the lips. You can definitely tell that the base of this product is an oil because it does melt quite easily. I don't think it feels greasy whatsoever, but it will melt on contact with the lips. I find that this isn't necessarily a very long wear lip product. Like I do feel the need to reapply it. Let's just jump into performance since I'm pretty much already there. I think the one thing that I don't like about this is that I do feel the need to reapply and it's not necessarily in the way that, oh, there's nothing on my lips I need to reapply because I want more lip product on. It's more so the feeling of I need to reapply because my lips still feel dry and the product has worn off. But I will say with consistent use, I have found that this is a very nourishing product. If you have very cracked and chapped lips, I have found that this really didn't give me enough to repair those areas quickly. And this kind of goes to show you that though I think the ingredients in here are nice, in practice, I just haven't found this product to be really the all-in-one, very dependable lip balm that I need. So now it's time for the best part. We're going to rate all of these. So number five at the bottom is Chapstick. And I put Chapstick at the bottom for a couple of reasons. One, because it's just a skin protectant. It's not really going to do anything more. And also too, I do think that there is a problem with the product not being sustainable, but I also understand that it is a very widely available product and it's affordable. So those two things are also very important. If you're looking for a chapstick, try to read the ingredients and look for one with vitamin E and some more seed butters. But overall performance for me, I have found this useful as a protectant, but not really anything other than that. Next, we have the Agave Lip Therapy. 
As I mentioned before, in theory, I really like this product, but in practice, I just found that my lips were left needing more. It wanted more moisture. It wanted more protection. And though I love the smell and I actually really enjoy the texture, I just found that this didn't quite do it for me. Now we get into the ones that I really love. Um, Number three is actually the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask. And I put this one at number three, not because I don't love it, because I do still really love it, but I also understand that in a lip balm, we want the product to really be getting our lips back to a healthy place and not necessarily just softening the outer layer of our skin. I still love this and depend on this in the winter when my skin is feeling very crackly on my lips. I do treat it more as like a lip essence. Good to soften the lips, but not necessarily like a moisturizer. Next, we have the Lana Lips. I love this one for every day. This has definitely been an everyday lip product. I love the smell. I love the texture. I love the packaging. And in general, I just feel like this keeps my lips in a very stable, moisturized place. It protects them without it feeling really thick and gloopy on the lips. Overall, I really like this one. And lastly, the one that I didn't want to win, and only because of the price point, um, it is the Nukes Reb de Meal. This has truly been a standout, and I mentioned this earlier while reviewing, because it leaves my lips hydrated for a long time. My lips feel moisturized, consistently like it's actually repairing the skin on the lips and getting it back to a place where they can protect themselves and that's really the point with all skincare products in my opinion skincare is to aid the skin so that it can repair itself i've just found that my lips are at such a healthier place that they can do the heavy lifting i don't have to keep applying the lip balm to try and help my lips you also don't need a lot of products so if you are worried about taking the plunge with purchasing it because it's more expensive you don't need a lot of product because again it is actually helping the lips i also love the finish i love that i can wear it super comfortably under all of my lipsticks actually i haven't really been applying lipsticks without applying this first a very very awesome formula i will leave all of these lip balms linked down below for you guys definitely make sure to give this video a thumbs up and do you guys want to see more videos like this? If you want to see me comparing other brands, different lip products or skin products, or mascaras, concealers, just let me know down below. I would be happy to do another video like this. Hope you're having a great holiday and I will see you in my next one.